out for a morning run we happen up on the pack leave them chance check them out these are Hebridean sheep they used to work for Knott's Wildlife Trust and look after these bad boys hey how you doing fellas all right don't mind me see you later Oh my god. Yeah, you don't want to see this in the morning, do you? So I've been struggling to uh, be motivated to get a run in in the afternoons after work. Uh, so I decided I'd drop Gemma off this morning and I'd come out and get a quick 5k in. Let's just turn this radio off. So that's what I've done. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock. I'm gonna go to work. Whew, I tell you what, I might just have a quick shower on the way past home before I go in. That's really done me. Yeah, but uh, it was lovely out there. Passed quite a few cyclists and walkers though at this time in the morning, which was a surprise. Uh, and those Hebridean sheep that you saw at the start there, yeah, I used to work for Knott's Wildlife Trust and they had a heathland restoration project and uh, they used to graze them. So I've actually uh, spent time with those animals um, in the sheds with lambing and all that kind of stuff, which was an education, but uh, I had to give it up because I had terrible hay fever. And at the time I just couldn't work through it. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, right, stop the car, let's go and have a shower. Oh, on the way past, I couldn't help but pull up and show you this. I've always been a bit of a nature buff, but uh, while well, the bluebells are out in force in Clumber, check this out. There's literally mile after mile of roadside just covered in these fantastic bluebells. It looks brilliant. Right, let's get back in the car and get home because there's a few people looking at me a bit weird over here on the road. Right, well we're in. I'm eating a bit of jerky because I'm totally addicted to it now. And uh, we're going to make a start on these radiators for the cold room. So. Uh, just have to install all of the uh, inny outy bits. Cold in the bottom, hot out the top. Plug this end up, add Jubilee clips, add push fittings, stick them all into the, uh, the fridges. And I only ordered these yesterday, and the boxes have arrived already for the controllers, so we'll start putting them together as well, one at a time. There's still some components missing, so I can't complete them. But I reckon we'll be able to uh, give it a good run. And um, I've also got the chiller back on today. We'll see what temperature that actually gets down to. get one of these radiators on here you'll see exactly what we've done so we've attached one of these plugs that are welded to this center uh, port here and then we've got the cold coming in at the bottom and then it picks up the heat as it runs through the radiator and the warm coming out the top I'm pretty sure that's the way up it would be in a car um, because it's got this little vent plug on this side here so obviously if you wanted to, unless it's a drain plug, then it would be upside down. So I could be wrong. But either way, shouldn't really matter which way the glycol is going to run through this. The only problem we have left, of course, is this drain plug. And purely by chance, an M8 bolt fits straight in there.
So I've just wound it in two or three times and it's essentially cut its own thread in there. So I'll take one that's not red hot and uh, too toasty to touch. And then what we will do is uh, just take some PTFE thread tape. Everyone keeps screaming at me to get the gas PTFE thread tape, but uh, the thing is I've got about 10 or 15 rolls of this stuff in a drawer, so I ain't buying no new stuff until this has run out, folks. I think it's Schnuz shouting at me, and normally he's right. If I swap onto something that he's advised me to do, generally so far, it's been good advice. So we'll pop that in there, PTFE tape, and uh, we'll wind it all the way in. And it worked outside, so there's no reason why that shouldn't work in here. So I've just got the other one to do, I've already done two. One more to do, and then we're ready to start plumbing these in. So we've had a leak. So the radiator that we put outside last night, I've had it running and we've got down to zero degrees on the chiller, which is great. But this, the little nut that we made, uh, there was just a tiny little weep coming from it. So I tightened it up just one turn too much. And unfortunately, inside here is basically just a brass threaded ring and uh, you guessed it because it's a tapered thread and it's putting extreme expansion forces on there it's cracked it so that made more weepy weepy which was not very good but I've come up with another solution of course you'd expect no less from me no doubt a uh, piece of perspex on there four screws fixed in position like that with this bad boy plumber's gold now this is uh, pretty new stuff to me I've started using it just a couple of weeks ago um, to put the gasket if you like on top of the boil kettle and I've only made one application and it's lasted that long this stands up to heat because obviously we're boiling in there um, it stands up to mechanical uh, movement and that kind of stuff. Uh, it stays soft. It's really, really good stuff. About seven, eight quid a tube from the usual scumbags like Tool Station and Screwfix, but worth every freaking penny of it. And uh, areas of use include as a thread seal. So what I will be doing is. Uh, Oh, it also says um, sealing and bedding extractor fans. Huh? <laughs> so what I will be doing is taking those nuts that we've fabricated out of the three others, removing the PTFE tape and applying liberal amounts of this. And then over the course of the next day, it will cure. So hopefully when we come to plumb everything in and turn it on, I won't do it today. This will do its job. And I don't have to rely on the PTFE tape or over tightening because I am over tightening, I can feel it. So uh, we don't want to be cracking any more brass fittings. And because we're running glycol through it, there is going to be a little bit of thermal expansion in the metal and the brass. So chances are uh, it could crack even whilst installed. So using this, we don't have to tighten it too much. And of course, this has the flexibility in there to absorb any movement due to thermal expansion. That's the plan. So I'm just gonna, obviously there's no saving this one that's cracked now. So we just have to put that plate on top. Hopefully that'll do the job. Um, I've roughed it up on the sander so it's got a bit of a key. And of course, we're also gonna put four screws in. That should fix it. Well, looking at that, I think that's gonna do the job, don't you? Uh, if we just have a look in there. That sealant is already starting to cure up. Look, it's not sticking to me. So we've done that one. We've also done these three rads here. They're all uh, covered around there with this uh, plumber's mate, which is really good stuff. And then I've dropped 
the pipe work in. We've just uh, slung it to the wall here. This side will want lagging with the pipe insulation. As you can see, it comes through the back here and up. We'll put a couple of T's in there and send it this way. Same here, a couple of T's. And then finally, this last section here, well, I think we'll probably just loosely bend the pipes around the corner. I don't think we need to bother with any T's in this section. And then the electrics will come out here. There'll be a motorized valve as well. We're just gonna run this up and along in the corner, and then we're gonna pop out the side of the timber here and I think I'm going to mount the boxes just above each door so we can see we've got one, two, three control boxes up there. I've ordered quite a few control boxes uh, because I want to make the control units for the fermenters as well while we're at it. So we've got, uh, these are the ones, I really like these, they're the perfect size, they're the ESR junction boxes. 240, 190 by 90 and as I showed you the other day you literally can fit absolutely everything in them with bags of room to spare the STCs fit, they don't foul anything I'm a big 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 fan of these we've also got some of the STC 1000's come in as well today there's another box full of them look um, and these are the swift four pin pluggable connectors that we get from Screwfix, the Robus Swift ones. So I'm just gonna dig a few T's out. Um, we'll put them in on the pipe and then I might start to mount the radiators up there. It's not gonna be a problem as long as I don't, of course, uh, fill them up with water until that plumber's mate is cured. Got to quickly shoot up to Screwfix to get some uh, teas. I'm short, I've only got one, I need four. So uh, that shouldn't take me two minutes to do that. And then we'll get this, uh, we'll get these on, these chilling plates. I couldn't resist it. <laughs> uh, I had to turn it on. So we've got everything in situ and uh, plumbed up. Uh, and uh, yeah, out here, you can see we're back on again and uh, we've got coolant running through those lines not glycol yet unfortunately but I'll get some ordered at some point bloody expensive it's nearly 100 quid for 25 litre so we're sat at minus uh, 0 0.4 degrees both of these lines if you look at them are cold, they've got condensation on them. And if I take you into, uh, let's say, in one, this, I don't know what it's gonna show up. It's got condensation on it already. It's cold. So that is something, the condensation is something I'm gonna have to address on the last cold room that I built. I hung a small tray underneath each fan to catch the condensation and that had a, uh, a drain hose and all the drain hoses could link together past each other coming this way and then they could run essentially down here somewhere like that or maybe at the other side and then what I did uh, was I created a bucket which had two float level indicators in it and a pond pump so when the liquid filled up to the top it would kick a pond pump on and it would drain all that condensation liquid out into uh, into the drain effectively and then once uh, it dropped the lower float valve that would break the circuit and reset the system again so uh, I've got a schematic for that somewhere also um, but it's something that I copied from uh, a design for an underback on homebrew talk or something like that a long long time ago and I built one of these at IVB just using just using a 17 20 litre bucket and it worked a treat Froggy will remember it if, he, if he's watching um, so I could do that to get rid of the condensation 
Or the other option is um, we don't run the cellars as cold as uh, as that. So maybe we just have them uh, sitting somewhere around 12 degrees instead of going any lower. And if then we have the glycol bath sat at around freezing, uh, it's still going to induce condensation. Honestly, though, uh, it is a wet floor. And it all runs down towards my draining section over there. So this is actually nothing stopping me letting it hit the floor and just draining it out of the cold rooms underneath the doors, to be honest. For now, um, it's not perfect, it's not ideal, but in a pinch, I suppose we could work it like that. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up today. I know it's a pretty short one, but uh, that run this morning killed me. That's why I can't be bothered to do them in the afternoon, you see. Uh, by no means have I got all my jobs complete today, but we're just gonna to have to come back and do it tomorrow. I need to get these boxes built, but I don't have all the equipment for it. Um, on the uh, new boxes for the cold rooms, I want to in incorporate a little on and off switch so we can turn the fan on and off um, I suppose I don't really need to but I want to do it anyway but yeah other than that folks it's a bit of a short one not much content today but uh, you know it's a vlog and a vlog is a vlog isn't it so we'll pick it up tomorrow and uh, we'll see how we feel then cheers